Good evening, everyone, and welcome to perhaps one of the most critical sessions of IMC um, um, on on all these three days. I mean, uh, I think I think given the given the growth trajectory that the sector is going on uh, is going on, uh, it's equally important that we talk about some of the enabling factors where uh, the entire ecosystem comes together and stimulates uh, investment and growth. Um, as a quick introduction, I'm Sonika Bajaj and I'm a partner with KPMG focusing um, on telecom, media and te uh, technology sector. And it is a great pleasure for me to uh, moderate today's session with our esteemed panelists. Um, as a quick introduction, we have with us today uh, the esteemed company of Sri uh, K. Raja Raman, Chairman, Digital Communications Communication uh, Commission and Secretary Department of Telecommunication under the Ministry of Communication, Government of India. Uh, Mr. Rajaraman has held um, has held many important positions in the union government, which include additional secretary uh, in Department of Economic Affairs, Ministry of Finance, uh, joint secretary in the Department of uh, Expenditure under Ministry of Finance, and multiple under, uh, other critical positions at the state government. We welcome you, sir, and look forward to your insights on the session. Uh, Mr. Rajaraman is joined uh, by Mr. Tia Dua, Director General, uh, Digital Infrastructure Providers Association. Uh, he brings with him uh, experience of over 35 years in the telecom sector. And uh, in the past, Mr. Dua has held uh, very prestigious uh, positions as uh, director in leading telecom companies, uh, CUAI, and, uh, and, uh, and other uh, senior posts in the telecom sector. We look forward to hearing your critical insights, Mr. Dua. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Uh, and to bring in the industry perspective, we also have with us Mr. Rahul Watts, uh, who is the Chief Regulatory Officer with Bharti Airtel. Uh, Rahul brings with him uh, with uh, him more than 25 years of uh, telecom and regulatory experience uh, wow. across policy, licensing, and spectrum. Um, he's been an active participant in uh, in the evolution of telecom and digital journey in India and uh, has played a uh, uh, part in way of various industry and regulatory initiatives. Looking forward to uh, hearing your insights, Rahul. Great. Sure. So um, as we uh, as we kind of kickstart the conversation, uh, we all uh, are aware of the role the government has played uh, in enabling a robust telecom ecosystem uh, and, uh, and kind of help uh, achieve the goal feeds uh, in terms of becoming the second largest uh, telecom uh, market in the world. And as connectivity and digital become mainstream, uh, the country and the country is ready to usher in 5G, uh, 5G technology in the country, it becomes even more important um, for uh, for a robust telecom ecosystem to be created, um, uh, you know, five G brings with it unlimited opportunities and applications, and uh, and uh, and even more, there is a need for uh, for uh, for the industry, uh, the government, the academia, all of us, all of us to get come together to uh, create a holistic growth environment. So just to start our conversation, I would request all the panelists to share their opening thoughts uh, on the potential of 5G and how can the ecosystem collectively collect, uh, cultivate an environment to stimulate growth and investment in the sector. And to start with, uh, uh, Mr. Rajaraman would love to have your thoughts. Uh, thank you, Sonika. So, I mean, first of all, uh, uh, I would like to uh, welcome all the, I mean, say hello to all the panelists here I mean, I think it's uh, good to have this discussion and um, uh, uh, the, the the government uh, has uh, has in 2018 launched the national digital communications policy with a with a broad objective of, of enabling digital communication connectivity to all its citizens uh, um, in, in various parts of the, of, of the of the country especially in rural and remote areas and not to speak of urban areas alone so essentially, if you look at it, uh, connectivity uh, is 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 uh, uh, has become a very ubiquitous part of the digital economy. I mean, without connectivity, one today, uh, especially in urban areas, can't transact. Uh, I mean, um, business can't transact. Personal transactions. I mean, uh, uh, I mean, social communication today happens through uh, through uh, digital connectivity. And in a COVID era, I think the digital communication has assumed a much more higher significance than would it would. In a normal circumstance, 
so therefore i mean uh, i would also like to place on record the the fact that uh, the our uh, uh, the, the uh, all the telecom service providers put together have played a very important role in keeping the net networks alive and uh, and and functioning and and functioning efficiently during the times of the crisis when traffic uh, hit the uh, the roof so essentially i think a lot of planning which has gone in the past in terms of plan, in 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 kind of uh, in, in terms of licensing in 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 developing private investment in 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 infrastructure in telecom infrastructure all have paid rich dividends i think if, you, if, I, if i may say so and when the government talks about reaching a digital um, economy of something like 1 trillion dollars I mean, in the next few years I mean, it would mean that uh, we need to further strengthen the the uh, available digital communication networks and uh, and i we see that 5g as a very important opportunity for us to actually take this forward so when we talk about 5g i think i mean i mean all of us I mean, i'm sure that the distinguished panelists here would uh, would probably add more uh, wisdom and obviously coming from the a lot of I mean, significant experience they have i mean we we see it from a from a from a policy perspective uh, this uh, would certainly unlock a lot of innovation in the economy you I know mean, that is where we we believe that the 5g can contribute to the economy and while 4g is already there we know the connectivity is already there but 5g uh, in a sense is completely different I mean, of offering uh, uh, different dimensions in terms of say in terms of its low latency in terms of say uh, the, the high bandwidth uh, that, that would offer so to the use of millimeter waves and so on and so forth uh, would throw open uh, a, a huge variety of use cases which would have been impossible in a, in a 3g or a 4g system so therefore i think it would be uh, the greatest opportunity for us to actually to through to actually pro, uh, to spur innovation in the market in terms of a variety of use cases uh, I mean, improved productivity in the in the marketplace uh, for manufacturing and services and so on and so forth. So, from that perspective, we look forward to uh, 5G. Um, of course, I mean, I think the launch of 5G uh, in India would, would pose a lot of uh, challenges. I, mean, I think which we are currently working on. In fact, the the government of India was uh, very very much aware of this of these challenges. I, mean, I think since uh, 2018, when it set up the high level forum for uh, for on on 5G. A number of committees have been set up and all of them have contributed to the knowledge and wisdom which includes i mean all the stakeholders in the market i mean the telecom service providers ispis i mean the the uh, academia research institutions I mean, uh, standards making bodies all of them have contributed immensely and if you look at the, some of the challenges obviously some of them are already i mean i think on, on the move like for instance uh, on spectrum issues i think we have already made a reference to try i mean i think we look forward to the try recommendations at the earliest I, mean, I think helping the government to to move forward to the next step of uh, conducting the auctions we also are looking at uh, a number of issues like say uh, uh, um, enabling technology trials to happen so that the equipment uh, gets customized to to requirements of india and i think so i'm, I'm very happy to note that a lot of the, our, uh, our panelists are already on the job and, and they am sure that uh, they would be providing more um, information we also also have a number of use case labs which have come up across the country i think both in the uh, in the hands of the telecom service providers as well as uh, Uh, in academic institutions research institutions etc so this has also opened up a lot a lot of scope for innovation in addition to that i think government of india has launched uh, I mean, a hackathon for uh, supporting telecom startups in in kind of uh, innovate uh, using this opportunity to innovate and launch new products and services their work is already underway government has launched the, uh, the a number of measures to actually to to make lives easier for telecom service providers in terms of delicensing in terms of uh, Uh, reducing the compliance burden and so on and so forth so with this a uh, few introductory remarks i'll stop here and let let me hear the other panelists so that I, maybe we can add more thought to the discussion thank you thank you thank you mr rajaraman uh, mr duwa your thoughts on uh, on uh, you know where is the industry headed and how do you see this collaboration with the government industry and different other stakeholders coming together thank you very much sonia a very warm welcome to sector telecom good to see you beside a very busy schedule that you have i think uh, i'll just divide in two parts one is the necessity of a robust infrastructure and followed by what we really actually the government has helped and supported us and what exactly would going forward will also need now if you look at sir a uh, go back to march 20 early march 20 when this uh, Uh, just lockdown was on its way. It was not announced, and as soon as on 18 March was there, we were all in a really panic situation. That how are we going to handle all this? Today, if you look at the whole scenario, I think every one of us is on a digital mode. Whether you want banking, whether you want on a VC, and you will be surprised, sir. 
the government has taken a lot of steps on this. If you look at during this period itself and the implementation, if you look at the National Broadband Mission itself, and then the state broadband committees itself. If it, when we started in the early March 2020, I think we just had on six or seven states which were aligned with the ROW November 2016 guideline. The guidelines are again, sir, unique by itself. I don't think I've been, I've been in the various forum, including abroad, and Tower Exchange is one of these. None of those countries have yet those guidelines. This guideline came after a thorough consultation with all these stakeholders, including the state. Now, today we have on board almost around 30 plus states, but the issue is certainly different that the implementation is yet. Now we are in the second phase of implementation where we did. Now, if you look at the whole thing in the NDCP 2018, which is again a unique document which came, then I think what we need is a further later. You, recently, we saw the reform which came in September 2015. The slew of some of them reforms, like you got moratorium, rationalize the license fee, spectrum option, etc. I think a little more push would be required from the government side to push infrastructure. I think what we see, uh, what I have seen in the initial days, 1994, when this uh, the mobile services were launched, I think uh, the it is a parallel activity, it is not a serial activity. If you put it, so today you're talking of 5D, you're putting up the network, you're also trying to put the devices, you're also putting the manufacturing on it, you're also putting the testing on, on a board. But I think parallelly the implementation and the creation of the robust infrastructure will equally be important. These are all parallel activities, which we did in 1994 when we launched, we did face those difficulties. There are issues, there are challenges, which we, as we go forward in the further discussion, we'll again bring it to the panel. These are some of the issues which need to be addressed. Much has been done by the government, much needs to be done so that we do not lose the bus. I mean, we, today we are talking 5G and we are talking about 6G. I think we, this time we are not going to lose the bus. Even 6G will be ready, 5G will be ready. So I'll again take a cue when the next uh, slot comes to speak to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dua. Uh, Rahul, over to you. Uh, would love to have uh, industry's insight on how you, do you see the sector growing and how do you see, uh, you know, government has taken some of the very critical enabling factors. How, what's the overall sentiment? I mean, I think uh, would love to have your views. Thank you, uh, Sonika. And uh, let me start by thanking Mr. Rajaraman for the positive sentiment the industry uh, is in right now. Uh, particularly, I think a very bold uh, reform undertaken by the Department of Telecom, uh, you know, and uh, really, uh, uh, you know, giving a robust, uh, uh, you know, framework for us to go ahead. Uh, th the industry, uh, you know, has contributed immensely. Uh, and we have multiple indicators in the past, uh, figures which link up, uh, you know, about the growth in telecom and the spread of connectivity with the GDP growth. Right, uh, the pandemic example, how you know we stood as an industry and uh, with the able leadership of the DOT were able to you know pass on that particular time. Interestingly, I was talking to an Amazon executive uh, a couple of days back, and I was trying to understand the strategies they were using at the time of pandemic to handle the immense traffic which was getting generated uh, in homes and offices. Uh, they said that they took out a leave from India. We requested in India to reduce the SD traffic to SD traffic, right. And they followed up soon after out there in US. So I, I really felt a little, uh, you know, proud for myself that some of the things which we have been able to do were actually followed up, uh, you know, across the globe, even uh, in markets like US. I think the industry is now completely geared up to the vision uh, set out, uh, uh, you know, for us uh, by the Honorable Minister and Secretary, sir. Uh, we are completely aligned uh, to uh, roll out, uh, you know, furiously in the coming days. We participated in the auction and. We are getting ready uh, for the next phase of growth uh, services, which are really going to, uh, you know, bring the customer much more benefits. Uh, the industry automation, uh, you know, cycles, the machine to machine. We are actually at the cusp of this uh, massive change, which is going to enable the journeys for future. So we are very positive uh, and with able leadership, we are sure we are going to uh, really come out with fine colors and contribute, uh, be a partner with the government in future initiatives. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you, Rahul. Um, 
Clearly, I think uh, what we've heard, uh, uh, Mr. Rajaraman, is that you know with the recent reforms introduced by the government, uh, the commitment of the government of creating a robust telecom uh, ecosystem, I think is I think that is very clear. However, with new technologies uh, like 5G, there will be new newer challenges also. So, uh, would be very keen to get your perspective on government's vision on uh, key expectations from the sector and uh, uh, and how can how can uh, uh, enabling ecosystem, you know, because there's a need for R and D, there's a need for new devices, there's a new need for uh, new use cases. How can all of this be brought together uh, with with the government taking the central stage? Uh, thank you, Sonika. So, I mean, I have, I have those very useful interventions from um, both Mr. Dua and uh, Mr. Watts. So, I would, uh, I mean, just uh, just like to say that I mean, in the, as part of the overall telecom reforms. The government of India has also been very keen, uh, other than the uh, enabling environment that would uh, that would reduce the costs of doing business in the sector. Uh, would it also would like to reduce the the, the ease of doing uh, reduce improve the ease of doing business in the sector? So, a number of uh, compliance and regulatory burden which is there on the sector also has been improved. Like for instance, we have set a target for ourselves of uh, reducing the number of uh, uh, I mean uh, compliances uh, from uh, by about 103. So, uh, and uh, so far, I think uh, uh, we have proposed about 87 uh, compliances for reduction and uh, the uh, we have achieved about uh, about 60 reductions of compliances. So, I mean, this is an ongoing piece of work. So, we expect the rest of the work also to be completed. So, while we uh, uh, are engaged in, a, in, the, in the, the larger task, but we also need to make uh, life easier for the, the bigger businesses as well as the smaller businesses. That's the essential underlying, uh, I mean, policy uh, thrust of the government. Now, when we come to 5G, I mean, I think because I mean, this is uh, the topic of discussion today. I mean, we see a number of a, a few uh, uh, regulatory challenges. I mean, I think, I mean, obviously, one of them being obviously things like say the right of way, which Mr. Dua uh, rightly mentioned. Uh, the uh, we have set the tone by establishing a regulatory regime under the right of way rules of 2016. Because India is a federal democracy and we have uh, uh, other institutions in the, under the state government, the local self-government and so on and so forth. So we got to carry all of them along and ensure that that, that the system works for, for the, uh, the service providers. So here, uh, I mean, in 5G, I mean, we would, like, we would see a lot more, I mean, uh, installations coming up in the form of small cells and so on and so forth. So which would require a higher intensity of collaboration between state governments and, 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 the, uh, uh, and the state governments the central government and the local self government so we have uh, uh, initiated the kick started the process and we have written to all the chief secretaries of the states requesting them that uh, that the, 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 the task of uh, enhancing the broadband connectivity to citizens is a joint exercise and uh, we got to work together and then ensure that uh, we provide fast track clearances at the same time uh, uh, clearances at a reasonable cost because I, I mean we see a number of state governments have taken very very proactive measures in terms of cutting back on the on the procedures. We have also seen state governments actually slashing down the costs of uh, of uh, I mean, uh, of a right of way and so on and so forth. But uh, a lot of work still remains. So therefore, essentially, we are also working on a national portal for for ROW clearances, which we hope to uh, come out very soon. So uh, at the end of the day, ROW is a is a challenge that we need to which we are taking head on, and we hope to with the with the assistance of uh, telecom service providers. Uh, I mean. Uh, the uh, DEPA and other organizations to work along with the state governments and and the local self governments to make it happen in a very faster manner because essentially we all of us uh, especially the three arms of the government both central state and the local self government are working towards to providing better quality of life for the citizens and i'm sure that this is the great opportunity here before us now the second challenge is obviously in ensuring that uh, i mean the 5g along with its great speed and i mean performance will also come up, uh, will bring along with it a lot of challenges in cyber security and and, 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 and and equipment security and so on and so forth. So this is something I think we are working on very closely with the industry. We are in the process of uh, uh, of uh, drafting uh, the equipment requirement, the essential requirements for the equipment, the the the, uh, the IT security assurance uh, standards like ITSARs and so on and so forth. So I'm sure that uh, these things these things are, would get completed over the course of the coming year and enable uh, the industry to to uh, roll out equipment uh, quickly. And at the same time, meeting standards which uh, uh, which India is uh, subscribed to in terms of uh, uh, global standards and other national standards and so on and so forth. 
so uh, while uh, these two uh, challenges uh, are uh, i mean uh, our regulatory challenges are in the process of being addressed we are very sure that uh, uh, i mean um, uh, the the close cooperation between the industry and the government will make make all, make all this uh, i mean uh, i mean uh, 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 a very simple exercise because i'm sure that uh, i mean we are all headed towards the the same task of uh, of uh, efficient and fast rollout of the services towards the end of this year thank you thank you mr radhan um moving on uh, mr duwa um, you know you did mention about the need for digital infrastructure um, uh penetration that needs to be increased uh, you know so how can what's what are would be your recommendations in terms of you know different uh, ministries coming together uh, towards uh, uh, you know work they working them working together towards a common digital infrastructure creation i think mr rajaraman alluded to uh, the national portal you know what could be the other areas uh, you know that uh, where you think there could be interministerial uh, collaboration to expedite the uh, the infrastructure rollout thank you very much sonia i think uh, ms rajaraman has brought out very clearly the way we want to do and the way the complete ecosystem has to work together whether it is state government central government tsps and ips together now i'll just go one by one how can we really achieve the target of implementing and bringing and penetrating the 5g now let me take a case of rw case itself i think there is a need to amend this number one not only they need to amend but they also need is to legal enforcement i may be wrong in wrong word in legal enforcement let me sir give you example that when uh, take a case of the konkan railways take a case of the dmrc when these uh, i was long time back when i was discussing with mr shri that the then md and i was telling how are you going to put the whole infrastructure for this at least around delhi which is now more than 300 kilometers if you go into delhi the first thing that he says i am going to get mandate from the government is that they will not give any stay on any of the building which come on the way and which happened so therefore i'm just trying to bring it to the complete panel is that there is a need for legal enforcement and also the mandating of this much effort has been done by the government and i think this is a unique rw guideline i think the many other countries in this region have been emulating this and now the coming back to beside other things you know what you need is a property tax issue is again i would agree and mr rajaraman will say look mr dua this is a state subject it not possible i agree with you sir it is a state subject but i think the variation in the state a property tax is huge it varies from 10% to 145% in case of maharashtra it is 145% is the property tax guy rents me out the building and he pays the tax which i have to bear with him i think this is again then if you look at the 5d implementation the availability of government land and buildings i think this is important this will be it. much has been done to put the aerial recent amendment once you took over i think this amendment which is going to be extremely helpful is a putting up the ofc on the area as a aerial cable which will be faster go back to the tower for um, fiberization today we have just 32% of the towers which are fiberized if you look at the national broadband target which is 70% next year and 100% next year, this will certainly help on this now this also should be uh, ip1 or the infrastructure provider should also be allowed to provide infrastructure elements also without distinction of passive and active what i mean to say if you look at the various recommendation we get regarding the enhancement of scope for this without going into b2c on a b2b type it should be applied to be there now the sharing of the infrastructure it is a, a unique concept which again came only in india i think this further has been emulated about 5 years back only it has been emulated by other can basically if you look at china china has rivers china has 20 lakhs towers and about 6 to 7 lakhs are only being shared here in india if you look at this rivers way i have 6.5 lakhs towers and which is being shared by more than 2.3 million people that's the kind of concept which india has evolved so therefore i think sharing of infrastructure other than this should also be allowed 
Now, there is also, when I say amendment to the ROW, the present ROW rules, they are fantastic, sir. But what we need is, if you're looking at the 5G, it needs is that IBS, it doesn't include IBS, it doesn't include small cell, it doesn't include street furniture, it doesn't mean cell on wheels, it does not include aerial fiber, but which has been done, street furniture. So therefore, again, common duct policy, again, to utilize this, I think, to make sure that the again and again and again the digging is not done there is a need for the common duct policy sir these are some of the issues sir and now as you talked about the security i think there is again a securitization of the telecom assets one is a cyber security on the network side there is also a cyber securitization of the asset recent case in punjab recent case in haryana which we really faced the problem was that this only, I think, Haryana government only has put the securitization class in the ROW. Now, they came forward and the DGP Punjab gave the strict instruction that the whole infrastructure, telecom infrastructure, will need to be up. So, these are some of the issues, I think, which we need to address to ensure that we, again, don't go back to the curve and we are ahead of the curve. Thank you so much, sir. Great, great. Thank you, Mr. Duva. Very well articulated. Uh, Rahul, moving on to you, um, you know, clearly, uh, you know, the, some of the recent reforms that the government has introduced, you know, they've been a breather for the industry. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of, I think, uh, you know, uh, announcements are specifically around the SUC and all are going to be, are very welcome uh, changes, uh, you know, going forward from, from a 5G spectrum auction perspective. But clearly, uh, you know, the sector remains to be heavily burdened with very high uh, regulatory outlays. So, um, given the criticality of communication services, how can this financial burden of the sector be reduced? Any suggestions or uh, or uh, thoughts around this where government can focus on? Sure. Thank you, uh, Sonika. Uh, so, as I stated in the beginning, I think uh, uh, the government has already taken a very uh, uh, you know path breaking uh, uh, you know journey uh, towards uh, ensuring mm -hmm. that we are able to set up the digital infrastructure you know uh, at the fastest uh, pace. And, uh, you know, and, and so the reforms, you know, are very, very difficult, particularly, uh, you know, for future spectrum, which is going to come out, uh, you know, in terms of validity period of the spectrum, in terms of uh, the SUC, etc. Uh, this is a sector which requires large investments, right? Uh, as an industry, I think we have till date invested more than 8 lakh crores into this business over the last 25 years. And uh, uh, this coupled with the fact that we are a very price sensitive market uh, where affordability is a major concern. Uh, so these two, uh, you know, and also the largest consumers of data now across the world. So we are like a contradiction in terms of pricing, in terms of usage, in terms of the investments we are making. Having said that, I think uh, uh, for the journey we are going to take out now, uh, we do require uh, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, initiatives to happen. Some of which the operators will have to themselves, uh, you know, tighten up their boots and do. Some of which the government can really, you know, consider. And in no particular order, I think, uh, let me first start by talking about... Uh, the, what is imminent now for us is the 5G, uh, you know, coming into the picture. Operators have been silently working, uh, you know, to upgrade their networks to be able to roll out 5G at the earliest. Uh, but pricing of spectrum, I think, is one major concern. And what I want to bring out uh, in this discussion today is what has happened recently in some of the countries, right? And I'm talking about uh, three countries where recent auctions took place. That is Brazil, uh, Portugal and Hong Kong. Uh, well, we can discount Hong Kong. Perhaps we may say it's a city-state, so not very relevant for us. But let's see Brazil. Now, in Brazil, uh, auction just completed last uh, month, right? And the type of pricing they got in 3.5 gigahertz was around 1.85 crores, uh, 1.85 crores per megahertz, right? Which typically will translate to something around 118 crores, uh, you know, for the entire country uh, for 3.5. Now, this compared to where we are, uh, we are like. Uh, <laughs> you know, much, much ahead uh, in terms of that. Uh, and by the way, this pricing extends uh, both to 700, where they discovered around eight and a half, uh, you know, cor crores of pricing. And similarly in Thailand, where actually it is, uh, you know, around 32, uh, in Portugal around 32. And also in 800, in the 28 band, uh, you know, which is also the point of discussion, it went down to hardly around, uh, you know, 80 lakh rupees if I convert to Indian money. So I'm saying the spectrum pricing is going to be one critical factor. And I think regulator has already seized of it. And I'm sure uh, uh, both the regulator and the licensor are going to, you know, address that particular issue, given that our uh, return on capital still, re you know, remains, 
uh, less than 6% and uh, that we need a reasonable uh, you know roc of around 15% to be able to you know make some uh, headway uh, we have made some suggestions to the government on the moratorium period on the upfront payment on the type of interest rates which we are looking for and i'm sure the government is going to consider along with the fact that we need a interference interference free spectrum usable spectrum to be able to you know make our lives ahead i think the second part is really about uh, about the regulatory levies which you also mentioned if you look across south asia today or even southeast asia for that matter uh, the levies which are there in india are uh, you know trifle ahead we are at least uh, 10 to 12% ahead and this comprises of uh, you know the levies we have on license fees on suc for the existing spectrum for the gst payments for the custom duty etc so if you add up everything we are at around uh, you know somewhere around 80 30% of a benchmark which i think should be around 18 to 20 percent uh you know going ahead so license fee reduction and suc being dropped down even for past cases is something which the government had actively considered earlier and we would uh we would see that maybe there is a case for the government to really you know consider that at some point in uh, time the other is about uh you know the gst uh and uh you know uh, should we i mean we are a tax industry in the sense the nearest uh and Mr. Rajaman knows much more about this than me. I mean, we sometimes I feel like we are like a tobacco industry. You know, we, we are being charged nearly a tobacco industry, although our role is much more healthier, so as to say for government, you know, for the country's uh, growth. So I'm saying that. Uh, so those are the areas. Uh, third, of course, is up to the operators on how they are able to rationalize the pricing, given the affordability concerns. And I think uh, uh, some interventions have taken place over last one month, and I'm sure uh, with the, the with that the APU levels are going to stabilize. To higher numbers around 200 and eventually you know go go further up so these those are the three things which are there uh, on some of which are government related some of which is what we have to do ourselves on great thank you thank you Rahul. some very pertinent points uh, uh moving on uh mr rajaman uh i think we would like to hear your views around uh, you know we talked about the infrastructure uh, uh Availability, you know, even with more than I think six hundred thousand cell towers, uh, you know, more than two point two million base tra uh, transceiver systems, uh, India still needs India's need for capex outlay uh, on infrastructure is not enough for the country so vast. So um, and clearly there are op there are various reasons for the shortfall. There are operational hurdles, there are financial hurdles, and there are procedural hurdles. So how can the government support in further strengthening the telecom infrastructure penetration? Thank you, Sonika. I think uh, very uh, good points have been made by Mr. Dua again and Mr. Watts as well. So, I mean, uh, I mean, I agree that I mean there are I mean the government's policy uh, breaks up into uh, financial po uh, policies in the, in the for this sector as well as non-financial regulatory policies of this sector, and between us and 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 uh, and, and try, I think a lot of. Uh, uh, recommendations have been made by try and the government has actually uh, effectuated many of many of the recommendations now uh, um, um, as mr dua mentioned i think when on the regulatory side I mean, there, there are possibilities for further improvement of the rrw framework i think and as he suggested I mean, perhaps uh, when some legal amendments or whatever could be considered i think I mean, definitely i think uh, we are looking forward to suggestion from the industry and we would be happy to work with the industry to see that there are uh, there is a better framework for uh, for for rrw I mean, and we are constantly pushing ourselves to to keep um, um, improving the, the 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 standard of service I mean, obviously there is a lot of ground to be covered and a lot of ground has already been covered and we look forward to i um, mean taking forward some of the suggestions he has made we've already reached out to the states and uh, we will uh, also look at uh, uh, i mean supporting the industry to to actually to um, uh, to expedite the clearances uh, and the difficulties they would face I mean, coming to the financial uh, side, I think Mr. Rahul made a number of uh, very pertinent recommendations. The government in the recent telecom reforms actually attempted to, uh, has, has actually done a lot of work in actually cutting back on the costs uh, that, that, the, that the, the industry suffers, which includes uh, things like bank guarantees, uh, things like, uh, say, the uh, SUC on spectrum sharing. I mean, there are a number of uh, items where I think, uh, and, and even on SUC itself, I think the way SUC itself uh, is computed. So I mean uh, the uh, these reforms actually will translate into some reduction of the of the of the cost of operation. I mean of course a lot more can be done. I mean well I think this is a policy matter and we would definitely take uh, the suggestions uh, which Mr. Watts has offered and take it forward through further discussions. So um, um, coming to the uh, the issue of uh, uh, 
of overall uh, I mean enabling more connectivity to happen in this country I mean I think this uh, would certainly I mean I think the the, the, the uh, lowering the costs of doing business as has been made out between all I mean during the discussions in the last uh, half an hour or so uh, is a very important part of it along with that uh, I mean obviously the there is also the need for uh, I mean reducing the uh, the, uh, the the cost of doing business through uh, through other 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 f efforts as well, like including things like say um, uh, active infrastructure sharing and so on and so forth. So we have all actually received a TRICE recommendation uh, on this matter. I mean, especially on unbundling and so on and so forth. And I think we look forward to I mean examining these recommendations and taking it forward. I think at the end of the day, we must uh, make it happen that uh, that telecom service providers are able to lower their costs of operation, both capital as well as operational. And I think that is a very important objective for us. I mean, as we drive down the costs, and I think the costs of uh, I mean, uh, the, the services would become more sustainable and, and also affordable. So I think this is a, a general path or trajectory that uh, the government would work along with the industry to, to make that happen. So um, uh, in addition to that, I mean, we are also working on, on making uh, efficient uses of the spectrum because essentially I mean uh, uh, improving the efficiency of spectrum use actually would also drive down the costs I and mean, I think as technology like 5g would enable more efficient use of the spectrum or the same same quantity of spectrum can deliver more more throughput so I think that we expect the technology to support us we are also working towards uh, I mean in fact in the last uh, couple of years I think we have worked very actively with the users of government departments to actually unlock a lot of spectrum within the government to make it available for use as, as supply uh, i mean expands and i'm sure that the uh, i mean it would it would it would uh, lead to more optimal pricing in the in the market as well when, when auctions are conducted so um, um, we in the government are very uh, hopeful that uh, in all these uh, discussions that 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 we are having uh, that's happening as part of the mobile congress and another and, and through through uh, stakeholders would and uh, in collaboration with the regulator would help us to actually to to move towards this uh, goal of uh, of lowering costs and uh, making uh, services more sustainable thank you um, so my question to you mr dua you talk, did talk about the ro rowb uh, uh, which needs to be kind of uh, rowb rules that need to be kind of amended to bring in some of the 5g related aspects relating to pts relating to uh, uh, to the small cells you know what do you think you know uh, you know additionally needs to be taken care of more from a you know the sheer volume of densification that we're talking about uh, you know more from a procedural ease of doing business uh, specifically relating to these aspects uh, thank you very much i think uh, ms ayaman has really addressed the issue with regard to the ease of doing business if you look at the whole scenario if just let me just go back to the recent uh, master national master plan that is called Gati Shakti, which was announced by the Honorable PM. I think it's a unprecedented hundred trillion dollar, hundred trillion dollar, which is thinking of. Now, now let's say we talked about ROW, we talked about amendment, we talked about national broadband mission. I think what is the most important area where critically we need to focus, and my suggestion to the uh, Honorable Secretary is that I think there is a need for a coordination between the various ministries that we work. You take a case of Gati Shakti, of course, there are 16 ministries, which we are not thinking of. In case of the telecom sector itself, the Gati Shakti, which came, I think, is basically is to develop the infrastructure. Uh, if I could suggest, and, and you are well aware of it, sir, that why we can have a GST type council, which would be an appropriate uh, collaborative mechanism and maybe probably use that. In that council, you can draw, like if we, as a ROW or a duct policy, or the state, I think we work with secretary ITs, urban development, local bodies, commissioners, police, et cetera, et cetera. I think we can have something like a council which can have various representatives from various central and the state message, including the other stakeholders, so that the issues with regard to this are handled equal immediately and the implementation of the ROW, implementation of the infrastructure and so that we can bring out the robust infrastructure. In this is one of the suggestions that I thought I'll just put it across. Beside whatever we have said, there are 
I think most, much has been done by the government, much has been done by the regulator, and there are many things which we talked about. I think these are some of the suggestions I thought in order to ensure that the development of the infrastructure, especially when it is relevant to the telecom, is implemented. This is my recommendation to that. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dua. Um, uh, moving on, uh, Rahul, I think uh, my next question is to you, uh, which covers the compliance burdens. You know, there's been a uh, industry voice which has been, you know, uh, which has been kind of raising some of the concerns relating to, you know, multiple audits uh, that the industry is subjected to. You know, there's statutory audit, there is tax audit, GST audit, internal audit, CAG audits, and special audits. Um, so, can any suggestions from your or your or requests from your end you know that can ease ease out some of these compliance burdens sure uh, so let me first uh, start by just taking from mr duwa's last point for a minute i think uh, uh, we have got uh, mr uh, uh, raja raman at dot and mr vaghela at uh, trai and both of them uh, play a very uh, pioneering role in the rollout of the gst and the gst council in fact uh, in the consultation paper, I had recommended uh, from Airtel side that there should be like a GST council, there should be a ROW council. And I think Mr. Vagela accepted that and actually it's a part of his recommendation. So I'm sure with the valid uh, uh, you know, experience, Mr. Raja Raman will try to take this forward because that's the only way to actually, you know, try to address it because it's very complex, sort of easy task, uh, you know, of which we are, uh, you know, trying to achieve. Okay, coming back to uh, uh, you know the point you were making, uh, uh, Sonika. I think let me start by again referring to the reforms package. I think again uh, the government has shown the willingness uh, to uh, you know ease the burden. Uh, Mr. Rajanon also mentioned about it, and some of these are like you know have been there for like Mr. Dua is there. He will know. Sakfa simplification. We have been struggling for 25 years, and finally you know we have uh, you know a model which you know seems to really you know help us out. Similarly. The thing about the import license, uh, you know, self certification, uh, self certification basis, again, very you know, pioneering uh, you know approach. I think uh, what we need to see here, and I strongly urge this to Mr. Rajanaman, is we need to move to the global best practices, sir, uh, in this front. And the global best practice is that we have a self regulation, right? Uh, you create rules, you create boundaries, and you ask the operators to become on a self regulation model. And if we don't do well, then please, you know, we should be wrapped on the knuckles and you know, uh, taken up to the task. That's one point. I think the second important task, which is a global regulatory best practice, is that there is something called a regulatory impact assessment uh, or a cost of compliance, right? So before we put up any new amendment, any new compliance, uh, which is there, I think there has to be a chapter or a, you know some discussion on what is going to be the cost of achieving that and how are we really going to look at it. Those are the global best practices. I'm sure you know the regulators are seized of it and there will be some thought put to you know those uh, uh, points. Now, audit is an important aspect, and, and that adds a significant time and resources uh, for companies. Uh, it is imperative, of course, for the government to conduct such audits to ensure uh, the legitimate share of their revenues, right? But it is equally important that we look at the multiple audits which are currently there, you know, and try to see how do we streamline them and reduce them. Now, under the company law, there are already significant mechanisms that put the onus on the companies to ensure so many standards and compliances. Uh, statutory bodies like SEBI have stringent norms uh, for listed companies, and companies also do you know their own internal audits based on the guidance you know which comes out. Now thereafter, what we are subjected to is uh, you know is a separate audit called a special audit by the DOT. Then there is a CAD audit also which we are subject to. Now, uh, despite the fact that both special audit and uh, you know the CAG audit are actually being done by the government, so it's like two arms of the government you know actually asking us to do the audit. Of the same activity and the results are also you know coming out different and then it's a loop you know what special audit says the cag adds to it then cag adds to it and special audit next year adds back to it right so it's a loop uh, which we are never able to come out of that is one i think the second big area which is in the domain of dot which i think requires a lot of uh, you know thought is on the assessment of the past through charges you know which is there right now and it's very cumbersome right now we have got 22 offices of ccas all across the country and it's a very complex exercise I mean, to do a hundred percent verification, we are today submitting more than thousand, uh, you know, pages to be able to, you know, do this exercise, and uh, uh, and it's a very tedious exercise. takes a lot of time and occupies a lot of energy for both the operators, uh, you know, and uh, for the government. So I think there has to be some simpler mechanism. First steps have been taken in the amendments in the AGR. I'm sure this will be the second topic, which may follow in the second uh, phase of reform. 
I think the third big angle is uh, really on the TRI part, which are on accounting separation reports, etc. Uh, and you know, which are you know, which is something we can take up with the regulator in any case, which requires. I think some of those regulations are like 15 years old, and the times have moved on. I think we need to really consider whether they are necessary anymore. Uh, coming back to DOT, we have an additional audits now called verification audits. There is an EMF audit, right? So, so and then there are billing and metering audits, which are done by the TRI. So we have around eight top type of audits. You know, there is a separate audit department each of the company to be basically able to you know address this. So I think uh, the vision of the prime minister has been quite clear: minimum government, maximum governance, and ease of doing business. I think if we keep that focus, uh, you know, intact, uh, we should really look at you know trying to see where we can club some of these compliances. What are really necessary? Should we do it? And I urge again, really look at the self-certification model uh, to be able to achieve this. This is what I would really like to submit on this. Great, thank you so much, Rahul. Uh, I think some very pertinent pain points that the industry is facing. Uh, I think with, uh, with that, uh, we come to the top of the hour of today's session. Um, uh, I would, um, and I think I would like to conclude that given the significance of the sector, uh, uh, and not only from a from from the current contribution to the GDP, but uh, but also as an enabler of the digital vision of the country, it's. It's imperative that the industry uh, and the government kind of collaborate and come together and resolve some of these pain points that we talked about. Um, and I think it's equally important to maintain the financial health of the sector and ensure that the sector is supported by kind of enabling policies uh, that foster the growth. And um, and as connectivity takes center stage. Uh, and becomes foundational to our digital future. Uh, I think today's discussion has been reassuring that uh, there is a broad consensus uh, amongst all stakeholders uh, that there needs to be joint concerted effort in moving the digital forward. Uh, and I'm very confident, um, you know, under the strong for and forward-looking leadership uh, of uh, Shri Ashw Ashwini Vaishnava, our Honorable Minister of Communication, and Shri uh, K. Rajaraman, the telecom secretary, the secretary, the sector is definitely uh, set to grow leaps and bounds. Uh, with this, we wrap up today's discussion uh, and uh, would like to thank our esteemed panelists uh, for sharing their uh, insights. Uh, and uh, and I and I wish you all a great day ahead. Thank you, Sonika. Thank you very much, Sonia. Thank, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, thank you sir. Thank you. Hello everyone, we heartily welcome you to the launch of uh, our joint CUI KPMG study on ease of doing business. As all of you are aware, government has recently announced various reforms for telecom sector. These reforms are path breaking and will go a long way in attracting investments in the sector. India's digital economy has entered a new phase of exponential growth and the telecom sector has played a key role in this uh, digital transformation. We are now gearing up for transition from 4G to 5G. Emerging technologies like 5G, IoT, big data, cloud computing, AI, AR, VR are changing our lives. Digital transformation will thus have a significant role to play in shaping our future. In such a scenario, ease of doing business uh, plays a critical role for further growth of the sector and the economy. CUI will continue to work constructively with the government and various policy makers on this subject. Uh, as an effort in this direction, uh, we have jointly undertaken a detailed uh, research study with our uh, consulting firm KPMG, and we have highlighted some of the issues with pertaining to ease of uh, business. We hope that this uh, joint study will facilitate achievement of the objectives of Honorable Prime Minister's Gati Shakti mission for infrastructure connectivity and in fulfilling his vision of uh, having a robust digital India. Again, we are very pleased to announce the launch of this joint thought leadership study with KPMG. And we hope that all stakeholders will find the study to be very informative and useful. Uh, with this, I hand over to our partner, uh, Puru from KPMG. Puru, please. 
Thank you. Thank you, Saurabh. My name is Purushottaman. I'm a, I'm a partner with KPMG and I lead the telecom sector vertical for KPMG. It's, it's been a privilege and an honor to jointly collaborate with COAI uh, for this very, very important initiative. Special thanks to uh, Lieutenant General Dr. S.P. Kocher, Saurabh, uh, industry leaders who have actually worked uh, tirelessly in coming up with their thought processes on how uh, some of the reforms uh, and some of the suggestions can be made to the government through this thought leadership. I, uh, I hope that this thought leadership will address some of the uh, uh, important challenges that, um, uh, that the industry is facing um, and will be extremely informative for the reader. Uh, but just to set a context and to give a context to why this thought leadership is very important, I just wanted uh, to provide some insights on how we went about uh, 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 conducting this particular uh, uh, survey and thought leadership. In the wake of uh, the, the pandemic, uh, when there has been an unprecedented impact on the society, it is very important that telecommunication as a, as a, as a sector played a very important role. And uh, we all know that telecommunication as a sector uh, helped creating a paradigm shift in moving from physical domain to a digital domain and uh, uh, helping industries uh, to not only function seamlessly, but also to provide a transformational shift and create innovation in their respective fields. Uh, the occurrence of the pandemic has proven to be not only a catalyst in adoption, and innovation of new technologies and has also played a very significant role in pushing growth of this concept by at least a decade in this sector. Government has lauded the, the, has lauded the contribution of the telecom industry during this unprecedented situations. It has also come up with very important reforms that are going to very, very positively impact the sector. However, there are still certain important reforms that uh, uh, that will not only add to, but also help the industry in moving in the right direction. The reforms have been announced to support the vision of a robust network technology for the wide deployment of 4G and 5G technology to connect all regions in India. The Vital Connect will aim to prompt users nationwide to choose indigenously developed technology, creating an enabling environment for investment in 5G networks and accelerating India's journey to be a digitally powered economy as envisaged by our Honorable Prime Minister. The government is also working on a second set of reforms for the telecom sector aimed at creating strong mobile phone operators that can expand overseas while connecting the remotest corners of the country. However, the recent measures for the telecom sector may provide a temporary breather, but a deep dive a reality check shows that the challenge to lift the industry out of the doldrums could be much greater. The ease of doing business for enhancing the digital infrastructure, the thought leadership with COI this year comes with the hope to work with the government and the telecom sector to set the right strategy, the right direction, and the right tone for digital transformation of the country. One of the prime objectives for the telecom sector is to enable digital transformation across uh, enterprises and shaping the digital future of the country. We have made an honest effort to collate the pressing needs of the sector along with the recommendations and present them in our, as part of our thought leadership. We are confident that all stakeholders of the industry will come together to address these requirements and help the sector grow exponentially. With that, I thank COAI and in the industry leaders once again for supporting us in developing this thought leadership. Thank you.